guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with my September wrap-up. So it's been a while since I filmed a wrap-up. The last wrap-up I uploaded was my May wrap-up, which was like months ago. Unless you follow me on my social media, then you probably have no idea what I've read for the past few months. And I'm kind of thinking of doing a recent reads video where I just go over all of the books that I've read over these past few months and just kind of give you guys my general thoughts on them. It won't be as in-depth as a wrap-up will be. So if you guys would like to see that, let me know down below. But I'm trying to get back in the swing of things and upload wrap-ups more consistently, so we're gonna be starting with my September one today. So the first book, or graphic novel actually, I completed in September was The Inside Encyclopedia of Early Earth by Isabel Greenberg. I've mentioned this in a few of my other videos, but this is basically a graphic novel about early earth, which just takes a bunch of different mythology from different religions and different cultures and kind of puts them all together to make one story to describe how the earth came to be. The main story follows this boy who is from the north who travels down south and he meets this girl and the two of them instantly fall in love. But then when the two of them try and touch each other, they realize that they can't get within two feet of one another because the magnetic poles of the earth keep them apart. So the way that the two get close to each other is by telling each other stories and that's how this story kind of unfolds. We get stories within stories within stories, so it can get kind of complicated at times, but it's very, very interesting, and I really, really enjoyed this. Like I said before, it has a lot to do with mythology, and that's something that I really, really love, and I really enjoyed the way that it incorporated a lot of different mythologies from different cultures. I just found it to be really, really fascinating, and overall, I think the story was really beautiful. It was also really, really funny, which I was not expecting at all. I was expecting this to be, like, really heartfelt, but it ended up being more comedic than it was dramatic, which I actually really liked. So I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars, and I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a new graphic novel to read, because I just think it's an overall really entertaining story. The next book I completed in September was Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. I already have a full review and spoilery discussion for this book up on my channel, and it's like a 20 minute long video of just me ranting, so if you would like to go watch that, I will leave it linked on the screen as well as down below. I'm assuming that most of you probably already know what Empire of Storms is about, considering I've mentioned it on my channel multiple times now, and pretty much everyone read it this month because it just came out this month. But um, if you don't know, this is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas, which is just a high fantasy series about things I can't even explain at this point because this book is so different from the first two that it's really not even the same series anymore. Since I've done a full review for this already, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it here, but I will just say that overall this was my least favorite Throne of Glass book so far. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I didn't enjoy the characters in here. I didn't enjoy any of the romances in here. I just found it to be really problematic in some ways and just not enjoyable for me. I do have a full non-spoiler Goodreads review for it though, so if you'd like to hear a little bit more of my thoughts, I'll leave that linked down below. Or if you do want to hear my spoilery thoughts, you can definitely go watch my video review. But I feel like I've kind of just talked this book to death and I kind of just want to move on from it now. Not really disappointing because I can't say that I was really expecting too much, but overall just not very fun. <laughs> the next book that I read in September was Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I listened to this book on audiobooks so I don't actually own a physical copy of it. But this book is about this girl who has this illness which makes her essentially just allergic to everything. Her body is really sensitive to different scents or foods and things like that, so she can't really come into contact with people. And she has basically been stuck inside her house for all of the 17 or 18 years that she's been alive. But one day these new neighbors move in next door and she quickly becomes friends with the boy who moved in next door. And they become friends by emailing one another and first their relationship is just online until he eventually gets to visit her and then they meet in person. And we basically just follow Maddie, the main character's relationship with this boy and with her family, her mom, and it's just a really, really cute, light, fluffy story. I'm not usually one to reach for contemporaries, but this story just interested me, so I decided to pick it up and give it a try, and I'm really, really happy that I did because it was just so adorable and so enjoyable to read. It's definitely the type of book you can pick up and sit down and read in one sitting and just enjoy from start to finish. The story is a little bit slow at the beginning and then it picks up towards the end, but I think that the overall pacing of it worked thematically with the story. I also really loved the ending of this. I won't spoil, of course, but it was not what I expected it to be. It wasn't necessarily that there was a plot twist, but the story just didn't end in the cliche way that I was expecting it to, which made me really happy. 
So the ending really brought the whole book together for me and I really loved it. And I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. And finally, the last three books I read in September were books 2, 3, and 4 in The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. I borrowed The Dream Thieves and Blue Lily Lily Blue from the library, so I don't actually own copies of them, but I do own a copy of The Raven King, so that's the one I have here. I read The Raven Boys earlier this year and I really, really enjoyed it, so I picked up The Dream Thieves and started reading that one almost immediately afterwards, but I'd only gotten about halfway through before I stopped and got distracted by other things. But then in September I decided that I'd pick it back up and finish off the series because I really did enjoy the first one, and I am so, so happy that I did because I absolutely loved it. This is like in my top five favorite series. I'm actually kind of hesitant to say this, but I think that I might like it more than The Infernal Devices. No, I actually definitely think I like it more than The Infernal Devices. It's just so good. The plot of this essentially just follows these four boys, Noah, Gansey, Adam, and Ronan, and this one girl, Blue, who go on these adventures trying to find this dead Welsh king. It has a lot to do with paranormal things like ley lines and psychics and ghosts and it just has so much more to it than that that I can't really explain because these books kind of read like a dream. That's really the best way that I can describe them. Sometimes you're gonna be reading this and you're gonna have absolutely no idea what's going on. And then a couple chapters later, everything will suddenly start to make sense. That's definitely in part because of the beautiful writing style, but the story in general is also just so whimsical and dreamlike and I can't even describe it because I've never read anything similar to it before. But hands down, the best part of this series are the characters. I am in love with all of them. They are all so precious and I, oh, I love them so much. The friendships in this series are just above and beyond anything I've ever read. I absolutely adore them. The relationships they all have with each other and how much they care about each other means so much to me. And that is really what made me fall in love with this series so much. I know this is a very popular series, but I just want more people to read it because it's just so perfect and I love it so, so much, and the only thing I regret is that I didn't read it sooner. And as for my star ratings, I gave The Dream Thieves 4 out of 5 stars, Blue Lily Lily Blue 5 out of 5 stars, and The Raven King 5 out of 5 stars as well. This one was hands down my favorite out of the series. Alright guys, so that is it for my September wrap up. Let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite book that you read in the month of September, and also let me know what book are you most excited to read in October. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always, but that is it for this video. Video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!